gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of StarCraft Inc. I'm a Sen and Carnum, and you're watching a game between Virus Nama spawning as the Blue Terran on the top right of Shattered Temple, and Grubby, the Green Protoss, spawning on the right side of Shattered Temple. Now, I don't know if you guys know who these guys are. Nama has always been a solid Terran. He's been around for a very long time. Um, definitely long enough to have a good following and he's no Terran to take lightly so definitely a good match for Grubby who is actually a Warcraft 3 player with micro that is just ridiculous so that's one thing to watch for from uh, from this Protoss and it's definitely a good race to have that kind of micro in seeing as how you have a lot of casters so um, both players just kind of playing at standard except we did see double gas from oh no we had that was weird I thought I saw double gas from him maybe he canceled that I'm gonna open the production tab now for you guys and uh, ooh, okay never mind I saw this in the production tab and for some reason I thought maybe it was an extra command center but it's not it's just him morphing the orbital so um, he, we are gonna see two racks with ooh, ooh, is this going to be early aggression? Ooh, an SCV just kind of chilling here. Sees that there's nothing in this base. A stalker coming out of the gateway. So no early zealot. Um, sometimes a, an early zealot is good because uh, when those marauders start crossing the map, you're going to need something to tank that damage. But ooh, Reapers! Reapers! What? Well, I don't see Reapers anymore. Interesting, I like it. And we are going to see concussive shells to the Marauders are next. Um, so once the Stalker's out, it's going to go after that STV, but he knows that that Stalker's around town, so he books it on out of there. And uh, what are we going to see? I, I'm really curious as to what Nam is going for, and there's that second gas that I was waiting for, or at least thought already came out. And here comes the Reaper. That was a cool little moment for lag. It was good timing on that lag. That way we got to see the uh, mm, more lag. I'm not really sure why this lag is happening, but we'll get over it. So, Reaper's gonna not get any kills because his attack power is not high enough. There we go. He gets a kill and the SCVs and I mean probes are gonna come do damage to him and because of this uh, the sentry here, he's not gonna get away. Oh, he gets away! Why am I lagging so bad? This is making me sad. Um, I think I'm finally going to uninstall StarCraft today and reinstall it on my solid state hard drive. Um, I talk about that almost every cast, but I just never get around to doing it. Today is that day. Today is that day. So we are going to see a Marauder cross the field and beat the fuck out of this uh, Stalker because Stalkers don't like Marauders. And the Stalker still gets away. Interesting. Very interesting. So, I'm going to see some infantry pressure on the front door and the Reaper going around back to do some damage once again. Um, and just going to wait there patiently until the infantry gets to the front door. So, this Stalker is rallied here. I don't think it meant to be there. We'll see. Going to focus down Marines, though, before it goes down. And... Uh, it's painful to watch. It's painful to watch uh, a Protoss lose its early units simply because each unit is so expensive, each unit is so important and uh, it's really vital in surviving the early moments of the game. So, looking over here at the Terran player about to commit to some pressure here. By the way guys, this game is rated 9.5 on Ghost of Gamers out of 10 so if you're kind of wondering whether you should keep watching, you should definitely keep watching! Breaking down that bunker with the uh, the neutral bunker that just comes from it being an MLG map. And here comes the early pressure. Will the sentry get up the ramp? They do get up to the top of the ramp. There's an immortal here. When did that get there? And starting to create that nexus. Starting to make a bunker, but that's not going to work. As there are... <laughs> there's an immortal. Immortals are fucking awesome now, especially with that range increase. However, I want to see range 6. Yeah, that's the new range. So this is a new game. I don't always know when... Oh, nice! Force fields! Gonna get some free units! <laughs> oh my god! You see that? Do you see that micro? Oh my god! That is grubby for you! <laughs> what a... <laughs> oh my 
god, I've never seen force fields like that before. <laughs> oh my god, I'll get over that someday, but that was fucking awesome. Okay. Anyway, so the tarot player is, uh, he's gotta be shitting his pants up to that. Season Observer, though, good eye by Nama, holy shit. I'm always impressed when a Terran player just spots that observer and he's like, you know what, that's mine. And he makes that decision to scan it and shoot it down. It's also really cool when they EMP them with ghosts. Um, I think that's a great use of ghost energy. But anyway, so Nama's going to be taking his second, um, whereas Grubby is already done and saturated. So this is not looking good for Nama. However, Nama can spit out a shit ton of units. I mean, Terran units are dirt cheap. They might not agree, but they fucking are. And they can rebuild. Like, imagine if imagine if Grubby had never killed any units. There'd be uh, another Marauder here. Great Force Fields once again! The Zelts are going to cut the shit out of those. Barely going to lose a single Zealot. Holy hell, that was one-sided. So as Terran units are, in fact, cheap, they are dirt cheap. If they cannot kite... They are useless. If they cannot stim and run and avoid damage from the zealots. A banshee! What the hell? What? Interesting that Nama would go banshees even though he knows there's already a robo bay. Um, but Grubby somehow, with that observer, saw what he needed to see to know that banshees were on their way. He's got stalkers everywhere. So he actually resisted that attack with out using half his army. Grubby is way ahead at the moment. However, keep in mind that Virus Nama, how, however, didn't uh, send his siege tank, so he was also without part of his army as well as not bringing those banshees right away. <laughs> Yawning a little bit there. Once again, it's early in the morning. Uh, yeah. So. This is looking at, like it's going to be a pretty intense game. Stim is almost done. We are seeing Ravens, which makes me excited. I always like to see how Protoss players decide to deal with Ravens, because they're a tricky thing to deal with. Look at the legs! I've never seen that before. The legs running around without the torso. People don't do that. Anyway. Uh, so, we're going to see nothing special anymore. That Raven is finally done. Um, we did see a warp prism come out for Nama, or not Nama, Grubby, and it looks like it did warp in some stuff up here, and it's causing some trouble as ground units attack the, well, the ground over here. However, I don't think, no matter what you have, it's clever to push against siege tanks. You should wait for that shit to get, you know, unseaged. Oh, we might get a free one, though. No, there are infantry on the ground protecting it, so... That, that's the end of this harass. That warp prism, I think, should get out of there. However, it just really just skull fucked that entire mineral line. Gonna pick up the stalker and gonna get out, I think. Oh, come on, get out of there. Get out, little fella. Yeah, so the uh, warp prism gets out. <laughs> it doesn't even take a shot to its hull. It's like, you know what, that was, that was fun. I'm glad I got to watch. <laughs> So are mortals not just the motherfuckers of the Protoss army lately? Uh, but yeah, no. Never a good idea to push against siege tanks. Uh, but that that really worked out well for for Grubby. You know, the units lost. And see that um, the Protoss is not very far ahead. Only about 100 minerals. Well, resources, I suppose. Um... We're going to see Vikings come out. We're going to see infantry shields. Uh, yeah, uh, or is that... That's the marine shields, I think. So that's marine shields. Combat shields, yeah. Never mind. It's a different icon for armor. I'm silly. But we do... Come to think of it, we don't see any weapons or... Uh, we don't see any infantry upgrades, which is interesting. Um, it's hard to get upgrades when you're a Terran player going such a mix of tech. If you're going 1-1-1, one, 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 you have so many tech trees to go for, because your your ground weapons for your infantry... I don't even mention that there's a drop here. I think you can see that. Your ground weapons for your infantry, your ground armor for your infantry, your vehicle weapons, your vehicle armor, and your air weapons and your air armor all separate upgrades. So keep that in mind. It is expensive to upgrade a mixed unit type for, uh, for Terran, whereas... 
with Protoss, you know, your Immortals benefit from your ground upgrades. So, there's one thing where it's really nice to be Protoss. You can make a scary fucking ground army, and you don't have to worry about upgrading vehicle weapons opposed to your ground, you know, weapons. So, that's nifty. Anyway, this map, I find, I personally feel, it's one of the easiest maps to catch Terran loading shit into their medevacs. I can't tell you how many times I've had an observer here and they start loading up in their own base to come over here and I just blink up and kill medevacs full of shit. Or they're, they're coming over here to my base, I've got observers here, and they load up on the low ground to come into the high ground. It's just funny! So we get some free units over here. Force fields, more dead marines in horrible graphic bloody ways. Um, oh, there's the drop! He was loading up just as I was talking about that, and there's nothing back home to defend against it. His single zealot comes in. Whoa! Feedback on something. I didn't see where it was, but I saw the animation cast on the Templar. So interesting, but he doesn't have Storm, so it's not going to help him. And I don't feel like... Wow. I don't feel like Grubby lost anything. What was he shooting at? He shot at a Vesvine geyser and a couple of pylons. Why did Nama not, you know, focus fire a Nexus or even a Cyber Core or even just scoot through and kill the pylons? I don't know what just happened there. But I feel like that was not focus fire in any way, shape, or form. Maybe he was buying time to do something. Maybe he was microing elsewhere. I don't think he microed that drop to the best of his abilities, though. Personally, maybe also I missed something. Units lost. That's units. Units lost. That's what I meant to go see. Yeah, no, I don't think that he uh, lost anything real pricey. Although Protoss has now fallen behind in units lost. So maybe he killed shit that I wasn't looking at. Who knows? As I said in Karnam, you miss everything. Anyway, more photon cannons going. Oh, yeah, he did shoot at a photon cannon, didn't he? So we are going to see more gateways being warped in, which is, with, if you're rolling in minerals, that is the best thing to build. If you just have excess minerals, if you can afford your wave of units and still have income left, you need to build more production. There you go, because in a moment of combat where you just can't warp new stuff in, um, always a good idea to throw out that production so that you can spend the money you weren't spending effectively while you were fighting. And <laughs> that was the worst day of any Zealot's life. Storm! Very nice storm! Force field stopping the, uh, the Terran units from getting out of the storm. Nama not even really watching. He sits here with these units. I think they're on, no, they're on stop, so not hold position. And the Protoss player backs out, doing a good amount of damage to that Terran army without losing anything, really. He knows there's siege tanks here. He doesn't want to walk into those, as those do a hefty number of... A hefty amount of damage to both Stalkers and Sentry. Despite Sentry being light, they just don't have enough health to tank something like that. Zealots, on the other hand, they're pretty good at taking Siege Tank shells to the face. Uh, that's pretty much how... Never mind. I was going to make a sex joke. That's inappropriate. About Siege Tank shells to the face, by the way. And a pylon gives warp in capabilities to the ground army over here as the ground army for Nama is annihilated by Grubby's ground army. Storms going down, feedbacks on the medevacs, immortals tearing apart siege tanks, focus firing with those immortals and good force fields from the sentry, but it is not enough. I think that uh, Grubby got silly. He split up his warp in, putting some over here that just got annihilated by the ground forces for uh, Nama. And just didn't have enough there. But I think he is ahead in economy. Maybe no. Never mind. I lied to you. There's officially a PF going up here with SCVs going to be mining on the gold minerals. There's another PF over here, which will stop any Ooh, there's a DT here. Ooh. Ooh. ooh, 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 ooh. Nobody likes that noise. No one does. No one ever will ever like that noise. So back into this game know what I'm saying so we got a sensor tower here which is a good investment for the Terran player 
Once you're on this many bases, it's just so hard to keep tabs on everything. A sense of tower is that nice, easy, do this for me button. So, lots of zealots coming in, but there is way too much Terran shit trying to bait them back onto the, the uh, storms, but the Terran player does not bite. He, with the center tower, recognized that there was one little pesky dot waiting back here for him. Also, this observer in good placement, good idea to watch for drops. Um, everybody should be doing this. Um, and a cloaked banshee coming in for some free kills, and I think it's gonna get them. No, actually changes targets. And oh, there he goes. He gets one. There we go. Three kills though. I don't know where he got all those kills. Um, so the oh, Protoss player just misses him. Oh, it's painful. Oh, I'm gonna send myself to away because I know that person's gonna talk to me. Oh, it's okay though. I still love him. Anyway, so this banshee might go down. What is he doing? Oh, it's so painful to watch. Oh, get the observer. Oh God, this is this is yeah. So now it just sounds like I'm enjoying myself. You know what I mean? But there is a banshee here. Uh, it's kind of chilling. It's gonna run out of energy soon, and when it does, it's uh, it's gonna rethink its position here. But no, it's gonna. Oh my god, go back in for some more kills. It's gonna get those kills, and we are at seven kills. Let this banshee go. Ooh, blinks now. Done for stalkers. They're gonna come and finish this off, and the banshee cannot kill it. Oh god, no! Oh my god, I can't believe that banshee just got away. Oh. Oh, it's not going to leave. It's just going to chill here. When it comes back, it's going to die. It's going to die. Anyway, please don't move those stalkers, Grubby. Please leave them right where they are. If they don't move, you're going to kill a free banshee. But anyway, look at this. I love this. I love the way he keeps his casters separate from the army. And as I say that, he like completely merges his casters with the army. But anyway, he's looking at pushing, I think. But... This is an easy way to lose a game as Protoss is to continuously smash up into the Terran army. It's you, you just can't be cost effective like this. Siege tanks. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, it's like spams EMPs all over that single high Templar. Oh, it's funny. Anyway, DT coming in here to do some damage. Oh, why are you leaving? No, come back! I guess that's why. Good call, Grubby, good call. You know shit better than I do. Gonna get scanned. Oh, there it is, there's the scan. No, run! No, no, oh, 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 oh. Okay, anyway. Virus Nama's got quite the setup here. He's got good siege tank spread. He's got a good amount of bio with some good upgrades now, which they didn't exist before. But look at this, 24 damage versus armored. Man, man, with a good firing rate too. Take a look at your homie stalker, so 24. We're looking at like just just four shots. Four shots. Oh no, it's 160, I guess. Okay, never mind, I lied to you. But with stem, it's like... That's some fast shit. It's good firing rate. You're going to do a lot of damage. With splash damage from siege tanks. Look how many siege tanks there are spread out here. So if the Protoss player decides to push through this mesh of units, it's not going to like what it finds. But here comes the Protoss from behind to do some damage to this. But no, the Terran player will retrieve his army and come to defend. But will it cut them off the pass? No, it's not going to cut the Protoss army off. A couple stalkers left behind to do some damage to one supply depot. It won't even kill it, but it won't get repaired either. Missile turret's going down to stop... I don't know. To stop observers from getting on the high ground, but that was Colossus that he used for high ground vision. I'm gonna come over here! Oh, I love it! Oh, I'm gonna come over here, and he's gonna do the same thing. But he doesn't have blink. Like, he has blink, but he has no stalkers. So, I'm not really sure what the plan is. I don't know why he keeps doing this. But now he at least knows the shit here. A single stock coming up to scout to really get a good idea of what's going on up there. I really feel like Grubby has the smaller army. Though his micro is unfrickin' real. His macro is not as good as some of his competitors. So I'd really like to see Grubby, you know, pull into this game. He's got, it looks like he has a less than the Terran player, but his supply is pretty freaking even. I don't know where all that supply is. 
Um, I wonder if he's got too many harvesters. Note the Terran player is the one sitting at 80 harvesters. So I, I don't know. Maybe it's because Protoss units are so expensive that, uh, like, even in food, I mean. So maybe that's why it looks like the Terran player has more shit. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I can't really, I can't really guess what, oh, it's because there's some stuff sitting over here by itself. That makes the army look a lot bigger. Two Colossus can do that. So, uh, I'm not sure if he's ever going to realize he has those, but whatever. Look at all the sensor tires, that's not even fair. Oh my god. That makes me sad, but anyway... We are going to see a standoff, a good old Mexican standoff. And as both players acquire stupid amounts of resources, I mean, like, look at this. The Protoss player has half the bank the Terran player does. So that just goes to show, uh, I, don't, I don't know if that's because the Terran player got his expansions first, which I don't think even happened, or uh, if uh, Grubby hasn't been as cost effective. I guess we can take a look at that, can't we? Units lost. It looks like, wow, the Terran player has been way more cost effective than Grubby. Which you wouldn't have guessed. It hasn't looked that way, but I guess Grubby has been smashing his units into those siege tank lines, which is a huge no-no for any Protoss player. But it takes so much self-restraint not to, it just feels like you don't have an opportunity not to. So I don't know. I'm gonna kill some free missile turrets. Why the hell not? No, that's a PF! Run! Run, little stalkers! Run! Oh! Oh god, no, they're just gonna die. Get out of there now! Thank you. Ooh, there's some... Oh, there's a free siege tank. Get out! Get out now! Oh, oh god, EMP going down on all those Colossus. A couple stalkers just could not get down, so they're like, whatever, I'll just die. And that's what happens. And... Now that the, uh... Look at... Oh, that was actually pretty... That was pretty good, man. That was pretty good. Thumbs up, Grubby. So, there's a lot of Marauders on the ground now. Ghosts support them. I'm not sure why all those ghosts are cloaked. I really don't. And they're going to lose all their energy. Wow, this is a huge, huge miss micro by the Terran player. All his ghosts are cloaked and are losing energy. Oh, snap. That is not how you want to have your ghosts. Will he decloak those? There we go. Finally decloaking them. And uh, now they'll accrue some energy again. But, yeah, no, this is quite the standoff. However, his tanks aren't sieged anymore, he's not set up at all, but I mean, it's not like he has to be ready, he can see the Protoss player coming from a mile away, sensor tower stopping any kind of air harass too, and just, man, he's got the most incredible map coverage, this is, <coughs> Creep's got nothing on this shit, so I don't know, anyway, he's killing his own SCVs to free up supply, because he is max and sitting on a stupid bank. And it's still these Vikings kind of patrolling back and forth. I'm not really sure why that Viking is patrolling anymore, seeing as how he's got a grid of missile turrets that'll do just fine. And uh, a couple of SCVs going to wander out to see what's up. I'm just going to die. This Zealot's on the whole position. <coughs> and yeah, just executed. But those SCVs revealed the mothership. Oh, what a pickup. Oh, what a good moment. Now we're going to see a shift to battle cruisers, which was already on the way a while ago. But now that I'm pointing it out, by the way, battle cruisers. We have a lot of carriers out for Grubby, though. And uh, I'm not really sure. I, I can't believe he has the production to shit out four battle cruisers. I don't know where all that is. We're making a lot of command centers now. Um, I think he's going to try to uh, take one of Grubby's expos and quickly exploit it. I think both players are just going to let each other mine the map and then kind of go at each other when they feel they have what they want. The carriers, man, so freaking good. Their DPS is incredible. However, we aren't building any interceptors. He's not building any interceptors for that. I don't think any interceptors are in construction on that carrier. Grubby is not building interceptors for his carriers. Grubby, what the hell are you doing? Oh, what am I talking about? He's got eight of them. I'm retarded. It's just showing me that he's got air weapons too. Okay, I'm retarded. Ha <laughs> ha, that's funny. Ha ha ha. 
I'm stupid. It's also on auto cast. I don't know what I was thinking. Oh. Silly little Protoss player. For a second, I thought this was a uh, just just for the fact that it's wandering off on its own. I was like, oh, it's a it's a changeling. And then I realized that that's not true, because I'm not even gonna explain why. <sighs> we are seeing some wicked upgrades coming out for the Terran player. Battle cruisers that are one one one. When they are three three three, they are scary as hell. However, he does not have your mono cannon yet. Why would you get battle cruisers and not get your mono cannon? I don't understand that one. Carrier is gonna go up. Oh no! EMP going on those. All the carriers. EMP hitting all the carriers. Uh, and the mothership tank a lot of damage. Oh, there's the Yamato. Oh, oh, the Yamato is gonna do so much damage to all the carriers. Colossus melting the Terran units on the ground though, because they cannot get through his own buildings. Feedback going down on the carriers, so as the, the, the not the carriers, the battle cruisers, so as the battle cruisers, Yamato cannon, the carriers, the High Templar fed back the, uh, the battle cruisers. Making this a very one-sided fight as the ground units tried to, to bob and weave through their own buildings, making a nice choke for Grubby's Colossus to melt the bio on the ground as it came. So missile turrets just spraying missiles everywhere, trying to defend against these carriers as more carriers are being produced, more upgrades for them, and siege tanks just dying for free. Five battle cruisers on the way, but I don't think it will help as there are already too many carriers in the air. And it is a good thing. It is a good thing that Nama oh got as many missile turrets as he did. It's the only thing slowing Grubby down. However, his rally point has been misrallied, and it is forcing <laughs> Nama to lose battle cruisers. But he did pull that out in time. Grubby, I don't even think he's microing this anymore. Maybe he is actually pulling back. Colossus and Stalkers. I said Stalkers, but I meant Carriers. I'm gonna kill these PFs, which is good. That's some, some, some expensive shit. So Battle Cruisers trying to take pot shots at those Interceptors. Losing Interceptors is terrible for the Protoss player, because as he is on all his bases, mining those out is scary, because he has to put money into the Carriers constantly. They're an expensive unit to end the game with. Storm and feedback going down on those Battle Cruisers. And it's a good way to use the High Templar army because there isn't much bio left anymore. The mothership doing a lot of poking to uh, tank damage. Oh, we see! Uh, that is sweet. We see a vortex going down to like decrease the amount of fire that this uh, death ball has to deal with as uh, it can start hacking away at production rather than dealing with actual units. So now he needs to start focus firing, which he is. The uh, battle cruisers are focus firing down. Sorry, the carriers are now focus firing down the battle cruisers. I wonder how many times I fucked up these sentences. There are a lot of SCVs on the ground repairing, and uh, now we're going to see Zealots get in on the action and try to take down this PF. All the SCVs that were repairing are now dead, mules included. It looks like Grubby is pushing through. And Nama needs to do something, but he's at 122 supply to Grubby's 184. This looks like it could be the end for Nama. If Nama can keep his battle cruisers alive, maybe he can build up enough of them. And uh, it looks like the PF will go down before Virus Nama. The battle cruisers are ripping up the battle. Ah, the carriers are ripping up the battle cruisers. The zealots pushing forward to tear up the missile turrets on the ground so they cannot destroy interceptors. And it looks like this is the end for Virus Nama. However, not to spoil things, there's a lot of time left in the replay. You can actually see that just by looking down at the length of the video, so it isn't as much of a spoiler as it could be. So somehow, it looks like Virus Nama does hold on for a while. Whether that is just Grubby taking a long time to finish him off and Nama hanging on to the end, or Nama actually pulls something out of his ass and comes back. It looks like he is whittling down the battle, the uh, carrier count, and he is lifting off the building for some reason. I guess to uh, decrease, to increase the amount of time it takes the ground units to do damage to them. And it looks like Grubby will be pulling back now. Four 
more carriers coming in from Grubby's base. And it's not even like if uh, Virus Nama can deal with these carriers that he can push back into Grubby's base as there are photon cannons scattered everywhere. So he can't even do little insurgent attacks with Marines. He can't, uh, he can't do drop attacks like that at all. Scan going down to detect something. I'm not even sure what. Seems like kind of a useless scan. Maybe trying to find the observers, but the missile turrets won't even fire at the observers. The scan's going down everywhere. I think that is a sign of uh, Nama just kind of admitting defeat. Maybe he's trying to find those uh, observers. Maybe he's trying to find Dark Templar. But I mean, Dark Templar won't even be close because of the missile turrets. And I think... I don't know why Nama has not GG. There doesn't seem like there's anything he can do at this point. And more feedback going down on the battle cruisers. Archon is kind of doing a little bit of extra splash damage. He's not even taking damage. There he goes. The battle cruisers are just gonna be like, you Archon. And the carriers do pull out once again as they are out of interceptors. Oh no, they still got good interceptor count. There's a lot of stuff there for the Terran player. I mean he hasn't he's only lost one, two command centers. He's still got all the bases that are mining, and he only needs the production that is his uh, his air production. He doesn't need his ground production. So the carriers do have to kind of pull out, pull in, and make sure they are cost effective. They're not cost effective. Virus Nama will pull ahead as he's not spending the continuous cost on interceptors like the Protoss player is. So technically, the battle cruisers are a little more cost effective. However, the uh, regenerating shields on the carriers is a big factor. And the fact that the missile turrets are not actually shooting at the carriers is also a big deal. There is now a mothership in play and cloaking the so if you can pick off all the uh, missile turrets, uh, Nama will have to spend a lot of scans once again. But I don't know why he did all that scanning before. It seemed very wasteful to me. Um, I think Nama at this point is just trying to go down with a fight. There is not much left he can do. So there's those scans again, just trying to see what's up. But the missile turrets already saw that. And now we're going to see Yamato cannons going down on the carriers, not even choosing to fire at the mothership, although it looks like maybe they did. It's just got a large hitbox, so it wasn't, didn't look like they were hitting the, the mothership. And the, uh, all the battle cruisers kind of voluntarily go into that vortex, and the mothership does go down. The carriers need to start focus firing. Grubby not really paying attention to this fight anymore, I don't think. But there he is, now feedbacking. The battle pieces that do have energy left, and there's just so much to look at for Grubby. I don't know how you can pay attention to it all. And uh, the last few battle pieces, I mean, it's just it's such an even fight right now. As the carriers, like I said, do have to keep building those interceptors. Grubby now kind of the Terran player is catching up in income, like in uh, overall bank. He is still far behind, but he is climbing. And because Grubby has to keep spending money on those interceptors, it does allow the Terran player to be far more cost effective. And he is accruing a large fleet of battle cruisers, and there are SCVs underneath to repair. However, Virus Nama is becoming mined out. That being said, Grubby is mined out. He only has one operational mining base left, and uh, his income will be zero very shortly. And he is now suiciding all his harvesters into the Terran army. He should just. <laughs> He should take this, he should go in with his carriers. I don't know why he's sending them in by themselves. I mean, it's extra fodder for the battle cruisers, right? It's a little bit extra GPS. Not much, but I mean, every second counts. When you are down to the wire like this, there are now Colossus on the field for Grubby, which I don't entirely understand. That choice is the only opponent he has are battle cruisers. And uh, battle cruisers full of energy, and that. So Yamato cannon is going to be a scary thing. I am not looking forward to this engagement for Grubby, um, but it will take a lot of Yamato cannons to kill all those battle uh, carriers. One zealot cutting up the uh, <laughs> the last remaining best feet. I think he's uh, anticipating this could be a base race at some point. And that could very well be true. And if that's the case, he wants to make sure there's as little to, uh, to go and kill as possible. A few more probes being suicide into the Terran army. And uh, Virus Nama, I think, threw down some more missile turrets just to be a bitch. And uh, there, there's the last mineral patch for the Terran player. 
And here we go. Here's the engagement. Archon's in front. The tanks have a little extra damage and do some extra splash damage, but they don't do much damage to Mech. However, if they were used to focus fire on those SCVs, they could have done a lot of damage. We did see uh, what looked like a mix of EMP and Yamato cannon going down on those Archons, and there's a free battle cruiser. And it looks like those uh, this Colossus might come in handy when it comes to the SCVs. And there were some Marines, there are ghosts. Lots of Yamato going down on that mothership, so we should see a new mothership being created soon. Void Rays, six of them in production. Oh, Void Rays were the perfect thing to throw in this mix. They were already there and I didn't even notice. See, because all the uh, spread animation do overlap. And uh, he just can't crack the front door. I think, though, if he pushed now, he could do it. Um, he's giving... I think he's giving uh, Virus Nama too much time to recover, too much time to gain energy. However, if he lets him gain energy and feedbacks, he's doing the damage that would force Nama to repair it. It looks like we will do a shit ton of damage with Interceptors, with Void Rays, and gets a pretty much a free uh, battle cruiser. I don't think Grubby lost anything there. However, we are seeing, look at this, Grubby's bank run dry. He's not even full on Interceptors. He's got no income left. Oh, a little bit. He does have income. Okay. So he's not out of this. Oh! I didn't even see this. We got a second attack up at the top of the map. This is just like a reinforcement. How did it get up there so fast? There's no mothership here. Maybe just walk there. I don't know. We do have Colossus, so they can walk over obstacles, and the rest is all air, so that goes what I'm saying. We are going to melt the top half of the Terran base, but he doesn't even care. There's no use in that section of his base. Absolutely no use whatsoever. Now, as I say that Grubby is mined out, the Terran player is also completely mined out. He has no minerals left at all. 300, although he seems to be getting them from somewhere. Oh, there's that little patch. There's 60 minerals left in that patch. Big deal. Two more Vordres join the fray, and it looks like... There's ample, there's like a couple thousand minerals here left for the Protoss player, so he can feed his carriers for some time now. And uh, that is good news for the Protoss player. This match kind of dragging itself on, I think. I don't know, it's going to be a flip of a coin here. Whoever lands good feedbacks, whoever lands good Yomano cannons, this could go in any direction. Some Colossus. There's a lot of Colossus here. Four, four Colossus mixed with... This is the scariest army you will ever see in your entire life. Um, coming from a Protoss player. There are High Templar Colossus. Carriers and Void Rays. And those carriers are 3-3. Three, three. The Void Rays are 3-3 three, three as well. This is not a good day for the Terran player. And for some reason he's bringing his orbital commands in to hover above his army. If he mixes them in with the battle cruisers. He can uh, actually overlap them and stop Grubby from being able to target them with feedback, which is a nifty trick. You see a lot of Zerg players using it with their overlords on their ground armies, but it doesn't look like the Terran player is going to take advantage of that. He's just going to land those command centers, which creates a choke for the, the Archons and a choke for the Colossus, but I don't even see Grubby using Archons anymore. Just Colossus. He wants that mobility. We are seeing a single Observer go in, but it gets scanned. So, there we go. Maybe we will see that now. He is now overlapping the command centers with his battle cruisers. Nope, just gonna land them again. I don't know. I don't know what Harris Nama is uh, going on about. The Void Rays uh, are gonna wander into the top left of the map to maybe come down from the top and ambush. I'm not really sure what they are thinking. No, they're just scouting for free units, I believe. And the carriers and the mothership, the Colossus, are still over here as well. A scan going down, seeing everything, but it's not like he doesn't already know what is there. And <laughs> a snipe executing a High Templar. This match has become a stupid standoff. I'd really like to see someone end it. It looks like Virus Nama is just fooling around now, circling his battle cruisers in and over themselves, waiting for Nam or Grubby to make that final push. And I mean, this is a tournament game. I'm not sure why Grubby, uh, why Nama is doing this. I guess he does have a chance to pull out of this and win, but 
It's not likely. Grubby is actually going to wander a mothership down here that has a lot of energy. Maybe it's going to be a warp in. I don't know. No, now it wanders back. Come on, Grubby, end this game. Here we go. He's going to push in with everything he has. And this is going to be down to uh, basically Grubby getting his feedbacks off before the Yamato cannons go down. And are we going to see those Yamato cannons? Oh, look at the battle cruiser step forward and just get fed back and then wander through a net of storm. And once again, Grubby pulls back, not committing to finishing this game. And uh, a single ghost wanders forward, trying to get off some good EMPs, but there's nothing to EMP. As the observer does spot the ghost, and a Templar wanders in to get off a feedback. So, not a good situation for anyone. It looks like Grubby is long distance mining from Nama's unharvested gold. And there goes the Vortex! Colossus, not even useful in this situation. Just shooting at a PF that is not fighting back. Uh, all the battle cruisers are in that vortex. <laughs> Sealing the vortex with the command center. The, uh, as soon as there they are, there's the battle cruisers, and they are all going down to the void rays, to the carriers, to the motherships. A couple uh, Yamato cannons go down, but almost the entire army for Pyrus Nama is gone. It is now 19 supply to 183 for Grubby. This game is over. GG from Pyrus Nama and Grubby. I'm Assistant Carnum. You're watching Starcraft Inc.